Greetings! Welcome to Day of the Indie. In this introduction to Moho tutorial series, you'll learn everything you need to know in order to make your way around Moho, starting with the interface and the draw tools. And what better way to learn than by creating an alien bug hybrid character named Fred? As you work through this series, you'll be building your skills and hopefully having some fun. By the end of the first part of the series, which will consist of several videos, you'll have a character that's ready to be rigged and animated. For those of you who don't know, or who haven't guessed by now, Moho is an animation program published by Smith Micro Software. At the time of this recording, Smith Micro offers two versions, Moho Debut 12 and Moho Pro 12. Although I'll be using the Pro version in this series, you should have no problem following along with the Debut version. Although, if you can manage it, I highly recommend the Pro version. Also, there are no prerequisites for this series. This is a beginner series, and as such, we'll start at the very beginning. And for us, that's with the sketch of our alien bug dude named Fred. I did this sketch in Clip Studio, another Smith Micro software app. The sketch was hand-drawn using an iPad Pro, an Apple Pencil, and a cool little program by the name of AstroPad. These things together are great if you're looking for a Wacom alternative. So in order to get this sketch into Moho, we need to first launch Moho and then import it. You'll notice that when Moho first launches, it opens a demo project. You can actually change that behavior. In the Moho Preferences General tab, change the startup file from default startup file to whatever works for you. For me, no document works perfectly. You're also able to change some other global options. For example, if you prefer a lighter interface or even a different color for the highlights, you can change that in the Appearance tab. I actually like the defaults, so let me set them back real quick. While we don't have time to go over all of these options, I encourage you to look through each one. Just keep in mind, sometimes the interface gets a little wonky and you have to go back and reselect some of the options, such as the case here. Because of this, you should only modify one tab at a time. When you're happy with the settings in that tab, hit the OK button and then reopen the preferences if you want to adjust something else. Hopefully Smith Micro will fix this soon. All right, let's get that new file ready. If the default file is still open, go ahead and close it. Then create a new file by selecting File New from the main menu. Mac users, you can use the keyboard shortcut Command N on the keyboard. Now we have a new untitled file. Let's import the sketch. In Moho, there are a number of different ways to import images. You can basically import the image on its own layer using the File Import Image option. This creates a new layer using the file name as the layer name. If we draw over this image, we won't be able to see what we're drawing unless we change the order of the layers or muck around with the opacity settings. As you might have guessed, this can be a bit of a drag. That's why if you plan to trace an image, like we'll be doing here, you should import it as a traceable image. Let's go ahead and delete this layer and then re-import the sketch of Fred. To delete a layer, select the layer from the Layers panel and then click on the garbage can icon to delete it. This completely removes the layer. Since we're basically starting over, we might as well delete the shape too. To select the shape, switch to the Select Points tool and then click on the shape. Once selected, hit the delete key. You're now back to a clean starting board and you're ready to import the sketch as a traceable image. To do that, go back up to the file import menu and this time select tracing image from the list of options. Select the sketch of Fred and then click open. You now have a traceable image. Because the image was imported this way, you'll always be able to see it through the layers, regardless of their order or opacity settings. In fact, you'll notice that it doesn't even create a separate layer for the image. That's because basically at this point it's part of the stage. And in fact, you may have noticed that it even scaled things a little differently on this import. All right, so now we have this traceable image, but what if we just wanted to show the layers and hide the image? To do that, we can go up to the view menu and toggle the show tracing image option, and you can turn that on and off. You can also use the keyboard shortcut, Command-U. All right, before we jump into the tools that you'll be using to draw Fred, let's remove that shape. Perfect. 
So the first thing to understand is that Moho's panels change depending on which tool you have selected. Notice how the top bar options change depending on the tool that's selected. So we want to start by drawing a shape. So we'll select the Draw Shape tool. When this tool is selected, there are several new options up here. For example, you can set the shape, the rectangle, oval, triangle, star, arrow, so on and so forth. We'll select the oval shape because what we want to draw first is Fred's antenna. With the oval shape selected, press and hold the left mouse button and then drag an oval shape over the top part of Fred's left antenna. Alternatively, you can hold down the shift key while dragging to keep things constrained, or you can hold the alt key down to draw the oval out from the center. All right, let me get rid of these and we're going to zoom in a bit. Incidentally, I'm using the hotkey command plus to zoom in, but you can use the zoom in option from the view menu too. To zoom out, use command minus or again, the option from the view menu. With Moho, here's a pro tip. Learn the hotkeys. I come from an Adobe and Harmony background. Those are two other animation tools. And for me, the Moho interface was a little strange at first. I personally, I, I generally don't use hotkeys, but with Moho, I use them all the time. All right, so the shape doesn't need to be perfect. And in fact, this one looks just fine. But what are those red points? Well, those are vector points and you can manipulate the points to adjust the shape of your shape. Now you can't just grab the points and start dragging because weird things start to happen, like creating a new shape. I'm going to undo that with the Command-Z hotkey. So how do you go about grabbing those points and manipulating them? Well, if you just wanted to select them, obviously you can use the Select Points tool. But like I said, that doesn't allow you to manipulate, translate, or transform them. In order to do that, you need to use the Transform Points tool, which is right next to the Select tool. To select the individual points on the shape, you just click them. If you want to transform them, you can just left click and drag them around to the position you want. But what if you wanted to select multiple points? Well, for that, you'd have to go back to the select points tool, and then you can left click and drag around the points you want to select. But what if you wanted to select points that are not selectable using a nice rectangular shape like this one? Simple, you can switch on the lasso mode and then use that for your selection. You can also hold down the shift key to add to your selection, and you can even click in the center of a shape to select the entire shape, or you can click on the curve or the line to select just that individual curve. This comes in handy when you have complex shapes that consist of multiple lines and curves. All right, now that you know how to select the shape's points, let's see what else can be done. If you switch back to the Transform Points tool and limit the selection to just a single point, you can toggle the Show Bezier Handles option on and off. Using these handles, you have a bit more control over how to shape the shape. You can also show or hide the curves with this option down here, as well as set how you want to view objects on the stage. So now you've got this oval but what if it's not shaping up the way you want it? A lot of times you can simply add another point or two. By adding additional points, you introduce a little more flexibility when molding the shape. To add a new point, use the Add Point tool. Then select the spot where you want to add the point and left click. Boom, you now have a new point, which either might help you shape the shape or might make it even harder. <laughs> But before you go back to shaping it, don't forget to switch back to the Transform Points tool. I'm also going to hide the Bezier handle. Sometimes it's easier to shape things when those are hidden. By the way, you can always see what the hotkey is for any item. It's usually just off to the right. Here you can see the hotkey for the uh, Transform tool is T, and for the Add Point tool, it's the letter A. And remember, if you wanted to hide the tracing image, Command-U hides it, Command-U reshows it. So we've got our oval shape, but what if we wanted to adjust the curves, you know, where the, where the points meet, if we wanted to maybe smooth them out or create more of a, a peak or an angle. For that, you would use the curvature tool. With the curvature tool selected, you can either set the curvature to be a peak or a smooth curve. You can even manually set the degree of the curvature. You can also use the Alt key and drag the mouse left and right to make smaller adjustments. All right, let's back up a little bit. For the antenna, I don't think I need all these points. 
To delete a point, select it using the selection tool and then hit the delete key on your keyboard. Fantastic. Now let's reshape this to match more closely to the sketch underneath. Again, make sure you're on the transform points tool before you try manipulating things. And again, this is where the interface of Moho might get a little frustrating at first because you're switching back and forth between all these tools and in something like Adobe Animate, you, you don't have to really do that. But in Moho you do. And I, I'll tell you, I was a little frustrated when I first started doing it, but after a while, you're just, it, it comes, it becomes second nature. All right, now let's go ahead and draw the other top of the antenna. Again, select the Create Shape tool and then draw another oval. Now select the Transform Points tool and shape the shape. Excellent, these look great. Let's get the bottom part of the antenna in now. So for the bottom part of the antenna, you're going to use the Freehand tool and the hotkey for that is F. Of course, you can just select it from the draw panel like I did here. With the freehand tool, you can set some pretty cool options, like whether or not to taper the ends, and if you do taper them, by how much. You can also set smoothing options and pressure sensitivity, for example, if you're using a pressure sensitive pen and tablet. But for this exercise, I'm gonna switch all of that off. Then I'm going to draw the bottom part for the left antenna, taking care not to connect the ends of the line to the top part of the antenna. To draw the line, I'm going to press the left mouse button and drag it the way that I want it, and then let go to end the line. Now let's go ahead and take that line and connect it to the top part of the antenna. Right now, they're two separate shapes. Switch to the Transform Points tool and then select the top point of the bottom portion of the antenna. Switch on the Auto Weld option, which is up here, and then drag the point to the curve of the top part of the antenna. You'll see a red circle if the connection can be made. Once you see that, let go, and you should hear a click when you release the mouse button. This indicates a successful connection, and now you have a single shape for the antenna. All right, let's draw the other one, but this time start the line already touching the curve of the top part of the antenna. You'll see that familiar red circle when you know you're on the right spot. Notice how the selection looks like a checkered pattern. You can actually switch this off by using the option in the style panel. So now you have these two individual shapes. Using the transform points tool, you can select the shape and resize it, rotate it, move it, and you can still select individual points or curves within that shape and manipulate them separately. All right, so I'm gonna clean up these lines a little bit. You go ahead and practice what you learned in this video and feel free to trace other parts of the sketch using different shapes. Add points and manipulate them. But don't get too wrapped up in what you're doing because in the next video, you're going to learn about layers. Layers play a hugely important role in creating your characters and their animations. And with Moho, you're in for a few surprises. All right, folks, stay tuned. And remember, if you're not having fun, you're probably not doing it right. <laughs>